Ooh. Ooh. That sounded Whoa. like a blowout. <laughs> <laughs> sounded like a blowout. Well, that was two that pops. Was two pops for one. For the, for the price of one. That what was, was that? Two for one plums. <laughs> no, you can't have these. My plums. <laughs> my plums. <laughs> On a school chill. Standing in line. Got to trade you from a Twinkie? No, these are my plums. <laughs> that, was a, that was a good double 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 dip uh, pop there. We had a nice first one, and then that, that had some... I don't know what that, that like over blowout. It sounded like a... You blew a tire on the highway. Hmm, that was good standard pop. Yeah, pretty I, I, standard issue. I get, yeah, I could, I, I give that a good seven, seven, seven two. Yeah, I'm about to say seven. I mean, what seven is this, one. What is amateur hour? <laughs> yeah, over here? flat score. Look, if that's your first score you've ever given anyone, then I mean, you could, you're allowed to give a seven point oh. No. Seven zero. You give me just go seven one or six nine. Okay, nice. <laughs> Seven and three eighths. Join the conversation. <laughs> you can rate our pops or cracks on the Twitters at the FF Dynasty, or we all have individual handles. Our guest uh, and well, second second week in a row, and uh, also a Charlestonian, Matt Foreman. You can find him at Fat Mormon on Twitter. You can find Jay Wayne at Jay Wayne's World, and I am at IMC Myers. We got the third uh, leg of our tripod here. We're going to go Hakeem Butler of our wide receiver talk. Hmm. Did you have something, Jay? Well, I was just say, if you're on YouTube, definitely hit subscribe, like, thumbs up, comment sure. in the section below. Make sure you do that. Shout out to Big Co. Out another week. Yeah. Getting, getting, he said he said he was thinking about coming, but had a bit of a baby brain and really just wasn't processing things super quick. And we know, you know, Big Co. Likes, uh, likes to get it on on these mics. So <laughs> Didn't think he could give 110%. <laughs> he didn't. Which he is didn't. very understandable. Right. Can't imagine. All Not right. looking forward to that aspect of it. I'm going to go Hakeem <laughs> Butler. <laughs> very guttural there. Yeah, yeah. The All catch right. radius of a condor. We got some combine stats from my man. Oh, all the, all the combine stats you want? In the, uh, all, we're reading all our combines. We're watching all our videos. We're getting all our stats right off the FF Dynasty website. Go over there and check all that out. And then after we have um, audio on them, we post that over there. So you can get everything you want for all the prospects that we've done. All their uh, combine scores, all their stats, all their videos, and everything we've said about them right on the player page. So be yeah. sure you check that out. Um, Absolutely. All right. So Shall we? Let's do it. Six foot five, three eight. Did you notice that everyone's size today was, was all three, eight? three eights? Yeah, so ra- so random. Yeah, <laughs> well, they were apparently handing out a lot of three eighths that day. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so six five, two twenty seven, ninety eighth and ninety fifth percentile. He's a large human. Wingspan that of a pterodactyl or a condor. <laughs> Thirty five was- and a quarter. Uh, or sorry, eighty three and. Th- is that three ace? Seven. Seven ace. Seven ace. 84. Basically rounding up the 84. 98th percentile, arm length, 35 and a quarter. 99th percentile. That's a number they don't like to throw around too much. Yeah. Hand size, 10 and three quarter. Boy, got them big hands. Big hands. You know what big hands means? Big shoes. Big gloves. Big gloves. Oh. <laughs> yeah, they were on the same page. Page. You would have to have big feet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which I'm sure he's at least a size 15. I would hate to have what to if, buy clothes. What if, what if, if he had like tall. a size seven shoe? <laughs> there's no chance. <laughs> there's, there's no ch- there's the, but he does have quick feet. So maybe, maybe. four, four, eight, forty, sixty fourth percentile. Mm. Only sixty four. Huh? Pretty, pretty fast for how big he is. I bet the height adjusted speed score. Oh, quality. <laughs> strong to quite strong. Vertical jump, thirty six inch. Not a great leaper. 57 percentile. But that wingspan and the length make up for the good leaping ability. Broad, the broad jump. jump. 128, 88th, and bench press 18 reps. Tough with those long arms to get 18th reps up there. We yeah. should get a bench press adjusted wingspan. <laughs> <laughs> a wingspan, you mean a wingspan adjusted bench press? Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Nailed so it. It's a long way to go with that. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> All right. So, that's <laughs> a pterodactyl. <laughs> Spelled with a P. Crazy. Yeah. Who knew? <laughs> who knew? <laughs> You can, I can never get the autocorrect on that, but no, yeah. just, I always forget the P. Trying to spell it ends up spelling pneumonia. There was a, an incident in high school where uh, I don't know if I should share this on air or not. Oh, but there was a sexual, oh, right. a sexual move where somebody pulled a pterodactyl oh. in front of a group of people. Oh, some, is that some, like the bat wing? Some, some, 
questionable floozy in high school got uh they start, started doing sexual things at a party in the middle of everyone and uh my friend will leave all the names out of this thing <laughs> while he was having intercourse pulled up the sheets and started waving them around <laughs> like a pterodactyl and going rah, rah. therefore named as a sexual move called the pterodactyl did he get that official on urban dictionary or i don't know but it's, it's something forever seer there was also somebody commentating while this was going on i've, I've was, always wanted to go to an eyes wide <laughs> shut party it but. was interesting it was interesting. If Big Coe's here, he definitely would have cut this and made it scrap oh, well. all that. <laughs> Old Eastern Pennsylvania. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get it. All righty. All right. I didn't know if we needed that story or not, but. Oh, it was definitely, definitely needed. <laughs> definitely definitely needed. needed. I feel much better about Hakeem Butler now. I mean, I might go home and try it when I get home. So, <laughs> I mean. Usually you like to perform it right at the climax moment. So it all really. Really there with gusto. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I mean, if you have to keep going after that, it's not going to... Yeah, you, yeah it's, you crescendoed. Yeah, that. right. The, the, mood, the mood's killed after that. Yeah. 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 And, and furthermore, your wife's going to be like, what the fuck was that, man? Right. <laughs> it's pretty much over, so you better you better have crossed the finish line. All right. So it's, good old, good old uh, Kama Sutra there. Yeah. Jesus. Anyway, Hakeem. <laughs> Hakeem. I don't think it's Hakeem, but <laughs> okay. What do we got on this guy? Where should we start? I mean, it's the biggest knock is the no production, right? Limited production. Limited production and, and late breakout age. I think he's got more catches than DK does. More, more. That's true. More production than DK. But DK, you know, ran four three three. So, right. I mean, I guess that's what you're into. Guys who are fast. I've seen that 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 story play out a lot. That's true. Yes, John Ross about that. Right. Mm. So Hakeem Butler. He's like two of John Ross, though. Didn't obviously has the late breakout age. John Ross 2.0 <laughs> has the late breakout age. So does lot, that mean you're out? There's no late break, late break, breakout age. Is that is that a big is that a, so is that but a, but college dominator 43.5 80th percentile. So pretty strong. And in the 97th percentile of yards per reception. Strong. According to player profiler dot com. Huh. So that's pretty good. Got to be this a dot is I don't <laughs> through the roof through the roof. I don't think that's enough though because the college dominator or the because of the breakout age, late right? breakout age. It's it's a factor. So what, does that does that what is that? Is it the but deal, they're, they're kind of it level breaker. itself out. No, it's not a deal breaker. All right, <laughs> <laughs> but Shut that right back in my face. <laughs> definitely something to be mindful of. Like I said, it's not like oh man, it's not. This is this is. This is written in stone where if you don't have this, you're just you might as well just throw them out with throw the baby out of the bathwater. But I mean, it's something to consider. OK, so. So, again, like the breakout age on the positive side, the breakout age on the negative side could be a maybe a deciding factor in making a decision for you. Sure. I mean, it's something like I said, I don't, it's something something that I'm considering, but something that I'm not. Like, oh, it's 30th percentile, 21.3. My big my bigger concern with the late breakout age is why the late breakout age and we're talking about alan lazard here guys right alan lazard sure we'll, we'll we'll get to that point in a second but i think the bio and maybe somewhat of why the later breakout age kind of go hand in hand here with hakeem butler yeah i mean you did a pretty good job running through that off air um you want you want any part of this bio or let's go you ready to go let's do it all right so around the age of 16 hakeem butler's uh mom passes away Mm -hmm. uh, from cancer, I believe. And she was like a work, work all the time, nonstop. They grew up in a really bad part of Baltimore. Yeah, they were surrounded by drugs and violence. The father left at an early age. He, he said he doesn't remember what age he was when the when his dad left. And then his mom was diagnosed. And so he had to like pick up the slack. And he was kind of like raising his brothers and sisters while his mom was going through treatment. And he was like making sure she got her medicine. And she was still working a ton I think she worked at the post office. There was times where she didn't even eat. She she always made f sure her family got provided for, but they were really poor. And then she did, you know, tragically pass away. And so at that point, uh, him and his brothers and sisters moved to Texas with his cousins. Right, which were uh, the Harrison twins that famously went to Kentucky. Yep. So um, good, de good, decent genes and bloodline there. Um, but... So he moved. They they moved in over there. Um, and so, some of the issue here is that 
obviously they move into Texas. Texas football is a big deal. Mm-hmm. Um, so when people transfer, they think they're transferring for athletic reasons. And this was really had nothing to do with that. Right. Um, it had to do with you didn't really have anywhere else to go. And this was the best case uh, situation for him. So he went over there. Um, <clears throat> so he had problems starting. Uh, so he was age 16 when he went over there. So his uh, junior and senior year, he only played like six games in both of those uh, years is for playing football right because he was having problems transferring and and he also wasn't a great student was having problems uh in that area right and so well with the with the basketball thing like obviously his cousins play a ton of basketball and so right. he played a lot of basketball and he with them. wasn't a big football player to begin with he was more basketball was his thing right and i think i don't remember who it was maybe it was his brother talking about how as a younger guy he wasn't that athletic he was always like taller and and more developed than other people but he didn't have like that good coordination and when he started playing basketball it helped improve his footwork and he started to learn how to use that frame and grow into it and then he took that over to the football field right and <clears throat> so became made, made well with it became a decent uh high school player but uh wasn't getting a ton of reps didn't didn't play all I usually play about a 10 game season in high school and then if you go any further it could be up to 15 games um, so he was missing, you know, four or five of those games in each of his junior and uh, senior seasons transferring over to Texas and really and, struggled with grades and eligibility right, was taking care, still taking care of his family family. Um, and then he's playing with uh, the, the guy alongside of him is went to Kansas. I believe it was Steve Sims Jr. I think that's his name. He, so he was a full ride to Kansas and he had they had other good playmakers all around him. So limited uh exposure in high school um and then like you said wasn't quite developed was 175 pounds and about the size he is now the height um and didn't get recruited didn't right. get any scholarship offers from basically any school yeah so two-star recruit uh the recruiter in texas who or uh, for iowa state who was in charge of kind of texas as their running back coach which is coach lou which is lewis i and i and i'm not it's a y e n i ayani Something we'll go along with that. Those that lines. sounds good. But he calls him he calls him Coach Lou, and that's kind of who found Hakeem Butler and saw some tape and wanted to get him in there, and then went and saw him play basketball and was like, "This dude's a monster. He's a freak. Let's let's see what we can do." They didn't have any scholarships for him. They had some guys eventually transfer and opened up some scholarship spots for him, um, and eventually kind of got him under contract to be a signing day once all this kind of stuff broke but before that where they he couldn't really get any room for him on the team he started telling his buddies about him of like hey somebody's got to take this guy because he, he could be a really good player um and eventually it works out was he recruited as at multiple positions or so he wasn't recruited at multiple positions but this this particular coach and multiple other coaches were saying that this guy could have been a tight end he could have been a defensive end like he's got the bend and the athleticism to play multiple other positions if he wanted to and there were some coach there were some teams at the combine that asked him to test with the tight ends and he was like nah i'm good right so he ended up with with um offers from houston offers from new mexico state and then offers from iowa state and he eventually took iowa state um and got over there but was like i said it was 180 by the time he got to the the collegiate level Right. Grades struggling, so maybe wasn't an eligible, maybe wasn't super eligible. Redshirted his first year, wasn't big on the weight room, didn't like it, and then. But people uh, hate that about him that he had to redshirt. Right, it's like he redshirted. How good could he be if he had to redshirt? Well, there could have been multiple factors. Like I said, right. not quite Basically ready, everything not built, would- and and maybe academically wasn't quite there. Um, this guy Rudy Wade takes over as a strength coach. And Butler really takes a liking to him. Hated the weight room previous, but as soon as this guy takes over, he starts seeing how like the gains and starts actually liking working out. All about them gains, bro. This really changes the way that Butler views working out and doing all this other stuff. And now you can see Butler leaving college, coming in at 180 and leaving at 227. Yeah. That's a hell of a jump. And then so the breakout age might be a little late because maybe this guy had some underlying circumstances that didn't allow him to fully, you know, blossom and get to the level that he needed to be at so we could be just making a pile of excuses for him because i like him um but there's there's definitely some things in here that lean to the fact of it, maybe it did take him a little longer to blossom and, and really turn in and he didn't did he beat out alan lazard in 2017 absolutely not um but he played as the, the two over there lazard was kind of entrenched and, and in that 
uh, year, the coaches are saying like this might this is the most athletically gifted guy on our team, but he's just not quite ready. And and Lazard kind of kept his his role on the team. Did Lazard absolutely crush it? His Senior year, no, he had 10 touchdowns, like 70 catches, under 1,000 yards. And meanwhile, Hakeem Butler's over here averaging 17 yards a catch, scoring seven touchdowns, almost 700 yards, and 41 receptions. So not play, the worst. It's not, not like the worst. No and then had a hell of a 2018. They challenged him to step up to be the man, and I, I think he accepted the challenge and and, and did everything uh, really well. So... I think explaining some breakout age right there for Hakeem Butler, there is a little bit of uh, some pause. Story, like, I don't to, story wanna, to tell behind the breakout age. I don't want to miss out on potentially what Hakeem Butler could be because of his breakout age. You know, right. that's basically what I'm trying. That's what I want to get across. All right. So now that we've we've told the long bio and the long story on him, what what would be some other things that you liked or disliked about Hakeem Butler? I thought he was great playing all over the field. I mean, the guy lines up. Left, right, slot. I mean, you guys can, I mean, you guys can attest that the guy was all over the field. Um, he's great in the contested cat situations, and that makes a lot of sense with his basketball background, where he was probably playing center, power forward, where right. he was getting those rebounds. That's exactly what he was doing. He was just doing with the football in the air, though. Um, I thought he actually ran pretty crisp routes. He had some nice, clean breaks, especially for a guy at at six five and two hundred and twenty five pounds. I mean, that's. Some some solid move some solid movement skills there. Um, I, I I thought his release was good, not great. It's better than Harry's, not as good as DK's, but definitely some some he can use his he can use his 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 length to be able to get off of guys and he doesn't get stuck there. But in certain situations he would get stuck because of his size and that's something I'll have to deal with. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought that he was able to separate downfield and in and in, in the intermediate areas, but he can also use his body control as well with that big size to be able to get open. So um, a lot of things you a lot of things you guys you guys um, made some good points. You guys can a lot of things like about Hakeem. Um, and <laughs> uh, people who have him high, I mean I'm not saying I'll have him low, but people who have him as their number one wide receiver, I, I I can see the reasons why. I mean, it's not like it's coming out of left field. So right. I think there's a lot of things to like about Butler. There are. I mean, but there's also some inconsistencies to his game. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna act like it's perfect. That's I mean, know? a lot of these guys, you would say the main thing is to be more consistent, and I think that's been the underlying theme all night. And I think it doesn't change with Butler at all. And there right. are some really big times where you face palm. Right, like with watching Butler, the going, first, dude, what the fuck? The first game I watched was Iowa, 2018, and it's like he had three for 35, and it, and I, I was just, it looked like things weren't crisp, and it and it didn't look like looks like he was a little was lethargic that good. and rounding things off, and, right? And it's like, but then you watch like the second game, and he's he's just like a total different player, and then you see him with these sharp cuts, and you see him separating, and you see him with the hands, and there were a couple bad drops in, in against the uh, Iowa game, but then like. Maybe he was a little hurt. You know, he was a little banged up throughout the season. And so maybe that could be in a testament for why he was a little up and down. But I, I can't act like he wasn't up and down. But yeah, th- there are definitely times when you see the precision and that, the te- technical prowess. And like, right. You want to speak to the whip. Route, well, well, right. Before before we even get to that kind of stuff, like I, I want to say that, you know, you watch some of the bad game, like Kansas State, for instance, is a terrible game. And like I've seen people say, was this your wide receiver one and pull clips from the Kansas State game of him miff- whiffing and or muffing balls uh, in, in that game. But then he also like a lot of the times where you see him have those face palm moments in that same game, he'll make you jump out of your chair and be like, holy shit. Right. That was ridiculous. Right. And, you know, I. Obviously, I would like to see him clean all that kind of stuff up. And I, I think drops are something that are a clean upable offense. Like you can you can get on that jugs machine. You can squeeze the ball a little harder. And I don't I don't think it's like it's, it's not as bad as Metcalf. I don't think. I mean, I, 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 I don't know how many drops Metcalf or how many drops anybody really had because it's just not a stat that I can find. But I, just I, I know just pro football focus looking for it. Just still even can't find watching it. in the games that that Butler has. I know he has to have a lot of drops. Yeah, I think the biggest thing with Butler is he lets the ball get on him too much. Agreed. 
Like that's like and and that's disadvantageous for him because when he does it, sometimes I saw in the Washington State game where he was letting the ball get on him he, instead of reaching out and using that big frame to be able to instead of body catch and get his hands out there. Right. He sits there and waits on the ball and it causes a pick six in that game. Yeah. Oh, he definitely and he kind of quits on that route a little bit. Yeah. He, he could have came a little stronger back to the ball. It definitely. But it does get called back because the dude showboats. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. But yeah. No, you're right. You are right. It, and it, there's times but, where, but then again, uh, like just like I said, you'll see a other ago, plays where there was a play where I saw with him and he just reaches out with his he just reaches out with one hand and just grabs the ball in the air. And it's just like, why isn't he doing that on every play? Right. I just don't know if he's if he's taking plays off or he, if this he's just inconsistent. Be. Like, I yeah. just want to if, if I could see that if I could see the best Hakeem you know, Butler, I could see then yes, he would be the wide receiver one in this class, but I'm just not seeing that consistently enough, yeah. and I'm seeing too I mean, you much see bad. It, but you just don't see it. I don't see it enough. all the time. I don't yeah. see it enough. Well, right. again, like I said about the K State game and all those other games, like the same thing in the Washington State game in that bowl game. Like he's he plays, he has that shitty run of things in the beginning of the game, and then he absolutely beasts them boys at the end of that game. Like he gets mad, and he is clowning them boys by the end of that game. So it's just like I agree. I agree a hundred percent with you. Like I, I don't know what he was doing right there. Maybe he w- d- didn't think it was coming his way, and then when he did, he was like, ah, uh, yeah, uh, whatever. Yeah. But there's also some times where I wish he would lay out. Yeah. There was there was a couple tries to run underneath it. I'm like, ah, come on, lay out there, bubba. right? Yeah. I but think, I think he's I think he's still kind of learning how to be like the elite guy all the time. I mean, I think he's got the traits, and he showed you that the top. He showed you what he can do, and then he just needs to keep working to get it more consistent. And I think, I don't think we've seen the best Hakeem Butler. No, and I think that, I think that's, if you're prognosticating that out, I think that's something you have to take. You're like, if I can project this, what can I see? And if you see, a, the, if you see, a, I don't even, I can't even remember a guy who's been this fast and this big. I mean, six, I mean, he's, I want to say he's, I wouldn't, this sounds like a bit of hyperbole, but he sounds like a, he's almost like a faster Mike Evans. I mean, right? it, it, and Mike it, Evans had drop issues, right? That he's had to clean up, even in the NFL. Yeah, and I, I think the one thing that you can say with Mari Cooper struggles with drops, like with Butler, is that his quarterback play has not been great. I right. mean, and it th- got th- and the true freshman this year at the end of the season was the best thing he's had all year. I think Purdy yeah. was Purdy's going to be good. I, I mean, think. in their biggest upset of in 2017 when they were playing against Oklahoma, they had a linebacker playing quarterback. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, Jacob Park is probably the worst quarterback I've ever seen play football. <laughs> he was starting for them sure. last year in 2017, and he and was brutal. And the thing is, that offensive line is terrible. I mean, if you yeah. watch any Dave Montgomery film, you've seen this before. But I mean, I mean, within two seconds, I mean, there's guys in the backfield right. in almost every yeah. single play. Which is, I mean, way to bring up Dave Montgomery. Yeah, huge bonus of watching all the Hakeem Butler film is that you get to see how fun David Montgomery is again. Yeah, just cutting yeah. the boys up. But like, he had a great game in the Washington State game. But if he's given some openings, I mean, he's going to run for some yards he just needed to get an opening and that offensive line is no bueno yeah all right should we take it to the uh yak on fleek yeah well so i i i would i think just to weigh my two cents in on what he does i think the route running is pretty good i think he wins all over the field whether it's right slot left slot outside left left outside right outside and i think he wins it you said it uh but i think he wins at all the different levels as well like so i I think that's awesome and the big thing for me with hakeem butler is is i I like i really like the traits and i think the agility that he shows for the bigger guy is better than the other two guys that we've talked about and he just seems loose i mean there's not too many six five guys you mentioned it before about the whip routes like there's not too many six five guys out there running whip routes out there i didn't see either one of the two guys we talked about earlier run them and he ran them and you saw the hips sink down and you saw him kind of get outside and it's just not something that happens a lot. So I think that speaks really well to the agility that uh, Hakeem Butler has. Um, and I, I think you see it out on the field. He has good crossing routes. He's he just doesn't, Maybe he doesn't have a super diverse route tree either, but he is kind of all over the field doing all sorts of different things, which is another thing that really weighs heavily on me when I'm watching uh, Hakeem Butler. And the the run after the catch ability i know everyone loves harry and i know a lot of people like metcalf but like this guy's just a a menace once the ball's in his hand physical definitely physical for a guy his size the get off me the stiff arm just the balance he doesn't get tripped up from behind like he just to me he just looks like a beast with the ball in his hands like better like like i said when we were talking about um 
Uh, had to squeeze one more in. Huh? Yeah. Like, I don't, I think either, either Harry gets too much notoriety for his yak or Butler doesn't get enough because this thing, this dude is filthy. Yeah. A lot, a lot of big stiff arms. A lot of, and look not, at that Oklahoma game. Oh, uh, well, he's, yeah. He's just running through dudes. Shoved all those dudes to the ground like it was. The boys could not tackle him. So that's just another another part of the game that I that I like of his. I mean, and I think he's got a good late separation. I think he uses the push off well. Whereas DK, he's pushing off and getting called for it. Whereas Butler can can give right. you that subtle, which you have to cheat because the DB is going to be cheating. Right. And I think he's hundred percent. He's a pretty Say decent cheater shit. late. Like all that, you have to be good at cheating. Right. And like if he's that big, he does a pretty good job of not fully extending the arm. Yeah, and that's a lot of arm to extend. So you're right. gonna see that exactly, 10 times and 10. you see it with Metcalf a lot because yep. he's got fucking long arms. So when he extends, when he's kind of pushing off fucking. late in the route, you see it. What? Just threw a random fuck in there. <laughs> he got fucking long arms. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's true though. Like the good receivers. They cheat, but they keep yeah. the, they keep it short. And and right at the end of the route, they just they just check you. And the good DBs, they hold you, but they don't let you get ahead of them so you can see the arm extended and being held. Right. Like that's what that's what the next level is all about. Right. It's all about cheating, but and getting away with it as far as DBs and receivers go. Yeah, agreed. And I think Hakeem Butler does a, a, a fairly decent job of that most most of the time. For sure. One last thing that I'll say about Hakeem Butler is he is a joy to watch in the run blocking game. Like yeah. he is getting after I think that's a good, it. Uh, he, he blocks, he, he, takes blo he pride. uses the length and he uses the strength well. He almost blocks too long. Like let him go out of bounds. The play's over. Let's get back in the huddle. Like, he's still running that dude down. Is he old, old big Mike out there? Excessive blocking? <laughs> Excessive blocking. <laughs> Who's that? You ever seen the blind side? Oh, uh, okay. 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 <laughs> big I mean, Mike. Strong I've movie. Seen it like once. Oh, once? Once isn't enough. I mean, it's just long. seeing, uh, just seeing for Sandra Sandra Bullock in those white pants that she's wearing uh, as a blonde. <laughs> I think she's kind of redheaded in that movie. No, Isn't she's she? full on blonde. Is yeah, she? I thought blonde. she was like strawberry. Eh, no, more like more like banana. <laughs> <laughs> more like banana. <laughs> I like my bananas spotty. <laughs> Uh, right. Did you just you just turn your nose up at a, at a you what do you eat green bananas? No, yeah. not a little bit spotty. That's a little a little bit. All right. It could get over. It could get overwhelmed. Oh, for sure. It can get mushy. I'm well. I don't want it mushy. I don't want it mushy either. But I want it. I spotty. want it right between firm and mushy. Isn't it weird that ripe? Right to me, ripe sounds like it's it should be green. That's what you call it when it's like under. Well, ready, tomatoes are green when they're not ripe when they're not ready yet. So I mean, but ripe means it's like pat, like a ripe banana has spots on it. Like it's past. It's no. I, I think that's only talking about if you have body odor. <laughs> <laughs> if you're ripe, you're probably past your uh, expiration no. date. There, ripe is like when it's ready to eat. When you when you squeeze a peach. Oh, I smell some ripe people at work every day, and I am not ready to eat them. I can tell you that much. <laughs> when you squeeze a peach and it's and it's ready to go, or you squeeze an avocado and it's giving you it gives you a little. It's ripe. How the hell do we get the avocados <laughs> from Hakeem Butler? <laughs> I don't know, but. Ah. One Hakeem Butler a day It's good for the hell Welcome to Married to the Game Yeah <laughs> You've officially made it So Strong run blocking <laughs> Strong Alright let's take a break <laughs> We'll rank these guys And we'll uh, bring this show To a Conclusion Conclusion